Hello, Open Ed 20. My name is Joran, coming to you from Hamburg, Germany. I'm speaking also on behalf of my colleague. So we are a team behind the OER camps. Christine Hirschmann, Gabi Fahnkrog, Blanche Fabri, they all did the preparation for this talk with me. I'm the one now in standing, uh, standing in front of the camera talking to you and hopefully um, getting to know each other a bit. After the 25 minutes we're talking now, there will be the possibility to chat afterwards. We prepared a Zoom meeting, so I'm hoping to seeing you there. So let's start about how the OER camps reinvented open education. Couldn't be more modest than that. Uh, but we also want to talk about the fields where we think we failed, where we should get better. The OER camps are bar camps on OER. A bar camp is not what we invented, but what we used. So there have been bar camps before there was the OER camp. The first OER camp was in 2012. So we can now speak about eight or nine years of experience with this format. And this is what I want to share you. Uh, so first, let me show you how that looks like so that you can get a feeling how a bar camp or the OER camp um, looks like. Uh, how does it work? So this will be a short introduction about the format, uh, the method of OER camps. So if you already know how a bar camp works, you can skip this part and just jump uh, on, on to part three. Uh, I brought some numbers and figures. I don't know if I will show you all of it. Uh, of course, you can take a look at the slides where uh, everything is somewhat more expanded than in my talk. Um, Chapter four, where did we fail? Chapter five, what do we now um, in a different way uh, other than before, where we think this could be improved from our experiences now? And um, I'll skip the last one, it's just important for, for the slides that you know who pays for the OER camp and who's the organizer and why we are so thankful that the German chapter of the UNESCO is the um, patronage or takes the patronage for the OER camps. Okay, um, how do unconferences or bar camps look like? Uh, a bar camp actually is to me, pretty much the same um, as a, an unconference. So it's not a conference, it's an unconference. But people come together, talk to each other. This is, looks like normal conferences, but like, like the coffee break in conferencing. So often we say that the bar camp is somewhat between a coffee break and a conference. So people coming together, this is a picture from the first OER camp that we had in Bremen, city in northern Germany. And 2012 and you can not only see that we have the OER camp and the logo that was invented in um, the San Francisco Bay Area um, so it's not what we invented but we used this idea that you used to come from from people who um, got to know the idea of the web 2.0 so they got to know each other on the internet and they thought we have to meet each other and to share our knowledge and our experiences and our questions in another way than traditional conferences. Because we on the web 2.0, we writing blogs, uh, maybe not, not then uh, there was no Twitter, but uh, maybe podcasts or videos on the internet. Uh, they were used to everyone uh, being able to, to raise their voices. So the bar camp has the same idea, everyone being able to raise their voices, to bring in their own experiences, their own questions. So what we did in Bremen in 2012 was we invited a lot of partners to do this with us. You can see a lot of logos down there. So these were different partners that we thought would be important to getting into a dialogue on OER. So this is, um, I think, one of the first pictures from the first OER camp. People coming together, I think it was no more than 70, maybe 80 people um, coming together for three days uh, at the university in Bremen uh, to share their knowledge. And um, this is one of the last OER camps before COVID-19 arrived and we had to change the format. So this was in Hamburg uh, early 2020. And you see pretty much the same idea, people coming together and sharing. Um, this is what the, the schedule looks like. So we call it the session plan. So it's a plan where we have all the sessions. Sessions are basically workshops and they are um, aligned in different rooms at the same time, uh, approximately 45 minutes for each session. And you can choose which session to attend. 
a session can be rather small. You see, uh, we always say it's a minimum attendance of two people, one person um, providing the session and one uh, other person interested in it. In this case, we have three person interested in one topic uh, in a very uh, small session. And the session can be bigger. This is what really is somewhat typical. Sitting in a circle uh, is not untypical for, for bar camps and for the OER camp. Um, this can even be um, in a room, uh, somewhat improvised. This can be more hands-on sessions, so people, I don't know, trying out new things, tinkering around, um, building stuff together, working on resources. And uh, it's also okay to lecture people. So it's not that it's not, um, not well, well, it is not so typical to, to, I don't know, lecture for 40 minutes and then have a five minute Q&A. Um, it's okay. It's just that we encourage people to, when, when they step forward and then they say, I want to provide a session on this topic. They also say how they will do it so that people know what they uh, can expect when they visit a session. Um, this is a minimum session, two people sharing their experiences. And this is not what, I don't know, what, what in a traditional format it would be like like uh, a pity if there are only two people visiting one session. But in a bar camp and especially at the OER camp, it's okay because it may be really be, be worth it to find out which person in a group of, I don't know, 100 has exactly the same question uh, as I have. Okay, uh, I uh, also built in this picture because it has the OER world map in it. And if you don't know the OER world map, please, after this talk, go to oerworldmap.org, probably. Um, it's a great and huge project. Okay, um, I already tell you, did, did tell you a bit about how, how it works. So um, uh, the conference and the unconference um, are pretty opposite to each other. Uh, the the workshops or the sessions are uh, taking place in parallel to each other are somewhat the same, but the preparation is totally different. In a conference, uh, you usually uh, have the participants on one side and the speakers on the other side. Uh, normally, they are sometimes they they are even divided at the entrance. So this is the registry line for participants. This is for the speakers. At a bar camp or unconference. Um, all people coming together can be actu active contributors. So um, it's not that um, we have uh, um, the, the experienced people and the newcomers. Newcomers can bring in great questions. Um, the, the schedule, the program, the themes are elaborated at a conference in advance by something like, like a program team. And um, if you register for, for a conference, normally you already know the program, the schedule. This is totally different at a bar camp. At a bar camp, there's only the theme and everything else is done collaboratively on site. Um, normal formats for a conference are panels or uh, talks, so someone talking. Uh, everyone else listening or pretending to listen. Um, this is also okay at unconferences, but it's much more typical that people are sharing uh, their experiences, their knowledge, and even only a question. So it's really not untypical that someone steps forward and say, I want to provide a session on this question. And I wonder if there are other people in this room that have or had had this question and want to discuss their experiences and their thoughts with me. Okay, so you might have learned by now that the unconference style is much uh, less formal, um, although there, of course, are now many conferences out there that are also less formal. Mm, this is how it looks like at the beginning. I don't know if you can see it. Um, people are lining up. So we, we have an audience, um, but we say now, please, everyone stand up and line up uh, who wants to provide a session. And it's always somewhat like, like a magical moment when people rise. And um, when it's your first bar camp, you always think, oh, well, no one will stand up. But they do. And then they uh, provide a short information on their session. We always say, say one sentence about your person. Uh, who are you? One sentence about your topic. What's your question or your topic? And maybe one you know, sentence about how you're going to do it. And um, then we put this together um, in a schedule 
normally digitally so that it can be distributed at once. Um, we also found out ways to, to print it at once, okay? Um, and if you have a very um, small barcamp, you can also do it like, I don't know, with, with post-its on a wall. Okay, this is the numbers and figures part. Um, what do we know about the participants? Just some numbers and figures for those of you interested in it. Um, we have now had uh, 25 events so far, very different uh, styles. So not only the pure and genuine bar camp style, but also, also hackathons and also uh, pre-planned workshops, not only sessions that were made up uh, on site. So we had more than 3,200 participants over the years. And um, these participants were the ones who provided 480 sessions. We also had 300 workshops that we planned in advance, uh, in advance but uh, 480 sessions were made by the participants. So this is, to me, always something like, like a miracle, even after nine years of OER camps. Um, we usually have more than 50% newcomers to these events. So people coming to uh, the OER camp for the first time. Um, I get back to this in a minute because it's a thing where we sometimes struggle. Um, we had some spin-offs. So the, the main spin-off is that we learned that it's also the method that people want to learn more about. We thought people would come together and learn about OER. But they also wanted to learn about the bar camp. So we provided all the materials we have um, developed over the years as OER. And we made a book out of it. I'll come back to this in a minute. Um, OK. Um, in, in times of COVID-19, we shifted to, to online activities. We um, planned five webinar series with um, 10 talks each. And they were made into a summer school uh, with five or, uh, I think, six um, online courses. and. Um, we also had a bar camp online, so we also have some experiences on that if you're interested in it. Um, these are the numbers of participants over the years. Um, this is um, the question we asked, uh, how do you want to be addressed? So um, 40, no, 57% uh, that they want to be addressed as uh, Mrs. Miss, uh, female. Um, so this is somewhat representative of, of the educational field in Germany. Um, this is not representative. Um, um, if you count vegan and vegetarian diet options together, they are like two thirds of, of uh, people attending the OER camps. Um, this is very, very, very typical for the OER camps. It's not divided by educational sectors. So we have people from the K-12 or school sector, from higher education, from further education, and they come together at the same events. This is really crucial. This is a key issue for OER camps. Um, so I don't know if you can see the numbers here. So it's school, um, higher education, further education. Um, these are about the same numbers of participants. And they don't have separate events. So we don't have a school OER camp or a higher education OER camp. They come together for the same events. They can, of course, discuss their specific matters in uh, separate sessions. So you can provide a session only for, I don't know, elementary school issues. But there are many issues that it doesn't make a difference if you're a teacher at elementary school or in higher education, because you all struggle with a and C license or something. Um, for, for all the license nerds out there, we have a very strong bias to more open licensing in Germany. Um, so over the years, we always asked people, uh, if you could suggest a standard, a, a default um, license for OER in German speaking countries, which would be your preferred choice? And um, Many of them said no idea, which is good because they were new to OER camps. But most of them said CC BY. And over the years, the CC0 graph has grown. And there's also still the CC BY SA uh, folks out there. And all the other options, so NC or even ND licenses, are totally de-appreciated. Um, 
this is because there's a lot of confusion around the NC license in Germany and um, we also had a very strong activist movement from the beginning of the discussions, maybe 10 years ago, um, suggesting that it's really helpful to have more open licensing. So this is, uh, I learned from internal dis international discussions, somewhat typical for Germany. Okay, um, skip this, skip this, skip this. Uh, talk about failure. Um, three things that we are working on currently. Um, one is more diversity. I don't know if you've seen it in the pictures, but uh, we could be more diverse in people coming together at OER camps. This is somewhat not so easy because OER camps are so far simply saying we welcome whoever wants to come and we mostly um, provide the information on OER comes via Twitter so we don't have like a, like a marketing budget or something so um, people coming to the OER camps are the people who find the OER camps um, we don't have too many uh, people coming with the learners perspective or with a perspective of not so privileged uh, groups. So this is somewhat um, a field what, what we are thinking about because the format of a bar camp doesn't allow to, to say okay we want to have more questions from this field because it's the participants bringing on their questions but it's still a field we're working on and we're asking ourselves how to bring more diversity to our events. Um, the second thing is more accessibility. Uh, since 2016, at the end of 2016, we have public funding, uh, which does not cover costs for uh, childcare, um, for, for um, more accessibility in the material we produce. For example, we don't have a budget for providing um, captions for our videos. So this is something we really want to improve. And the last thing is something that's interesting because it's not an actual problem, it's, it's a problem that, that's the perception. It's openness for newbies or newcomers. Um, I don't know if you have the impression in your language. In Germany, we say it's something like a felt temperature. So it's not the real temperature, but what people think, it's really cold. It's the uh, felt openness. Um, so people always, not always, many people, sometimes think um, okay the OER camps is where it's every um, time it's the same person coming persons coming together um, but it's not we know from the numbers that it's 50% plus newcomers to each event in the last years 2019 2020 it was 80 percent newcomers that haven't been to an OER camp before. But still, uh, the, the perception is, okay, am I welcome here? There are always people um, hacking each other and I don't know, um, they know each other a lot. So we try to change this and this is what we did. Um, we, we started mentoring. It's not rocket science. You probably know mentoring probably many of you better than I do. Uh, so we asked everyone on registration, um, uh, are you first time visitor to OER camps? Are you a newcomer or have you been there before? Are you an old stager? And then we asked them, do you want to be a mentor or a mentee? And we connected the mentors and the mentees. And this was great. Uh, we connected like um, one mentor to two mentees uh, in advance. So we uh, put them together in just an email and said, so this is, I don't know, name X, Y, and Z. Um, y and Z are new to OER camps. So we suggest that you, I don't know, introduce uh, yourselves to each other uh, via email or start a WhatsApp group or whatever. And we also provided some suggestions on uh, how to start the conversation. And we encourage people to meet uh, on site early. This is also very typical on bar camps or OER camps. People come early. So if you start the program at 10, you have many people being there at 9. So it's really important to have coffee. Um, because people want to share um, to get in, to, to get to know each other. Um, so what we also did was we um, built uh, so Anya and Kai uh, built the lighthouse in a fab lab in Lübeck, and this is uh, like like a space 
we served for newcomer discussions. So this is where mentors and mentees could meet. And we also had a session on the bar camp there um, to, to share knowledge or experiences and how to provide the experiences for newcomers to OER camps. Okay, uh, in 2000, late 18 or 19, uh, we had three events that we uh, did as a hackathon. We didn't call it a hackathon because a hackathon is somewhat you you um, may be affiliated uh, with when I don't know my prejudices. If you wear a hoodie, you might say, "Oh, a hackathon! That's great." But if you like a non-hoodie wearing elementary teacher, you don't say, "Oh, hackathon is what I need." So we call it something like working on your own material, working on your own resources workshop. And this was a really great, great format. People were coming together to work on their own projects in small groups. And um, not only we uh, were trying to provide a good working experience, but also we provided a lot of support, huge support. We had like 10 paid coaches uh, that um, provided input and provided individual consulting on, on the projects. And this worked really, really great. So on these three events, we always had people working together, I don't know, until midnight. And uh, we also made it somewhat not optional to publish your resources during the event. So this is crucial, not after the event, but during the event. So we had, like I, I think, 77 projects published at the end of these events. Uh, and this really makes a difference. If you say, OK, it's OK if you're 90% finished at the end, you can do the other 10% later on and publish later. It never will happen. And we uh, provided three hours or two hours at the end of these events that were reserved for, for finishing and publishing uh, your resources. OK. Um, we, of course, use Twitter. And we started uh, groups on Telegram. We call them six, which stands for special interest groups. So you can uh, become a member of the group, like I don't know, video and audio production with openness. Um, so people are uh, sharing their experiences there. It was also crucial to have the coaches that I mentioned earlier there, uh, because they were something like like like. Uh, a nucleus uh, in these groups. So you could also get questions and answers from other people in the group, but you could also rely on the coaches being there as someone who has somewhat more ownership over these groups. OK, um, that's it uh, about our, the groups. This is our spin off, the how to bar camp or how to OER camp resources we provided. So unfortunately, most of them are only there in uh, German. I don't know, 50 plus resources, um, how to explain a bar camp, how, to, I don't know, slides for, for introducing the format, um, the um, session plan uh, schedule and everything. But we also had a book published. And of course, it was CC BY licensed. So we could uh, start a simple translation. It's, uh, with a, it's, a, it's an automatic translation. So please be careful if you take a look at it. Um, we didn't check it. But you can. Be, and, and you can also copy it and use it further on, because it's CC BY license. Um, I put a short link uh, up there, oercamp.dot slash book. This will lead you to a Google Doc with this translation. And we're happy if you do with it whatever you could use it for. And you could also provide suggestions for improving the translation. So you have um, editing or suggestions rights for, for this Google Doc. OK, this is it. Um, the last slides are also here to say thank you. These are praises for just for, for not being humble, uh, because we are struggling with a lot of, um, well, people not knowing what we're doing and not trusting this like blank page. If you come to a bar camp, you don't know what will happen there. So what's really helpful is having like testimonials, other people s saying that you're doing great work. This is really helpful for us. So thank you very much for, for UNESCO and for um, the, the Horizon Report for featuring us and for, for the Open Education Global Awards, which um, awarded the award for innovation in open education to us in this year, 2020. And um, thank you to a great team providing great work now for over the years and hopefully for the next years. But we don't know what will happen in 2021. So 
I'm hoping to seeing many of you in the Zoom session we're providing now. You find the link in the description and maybe if it doesn't change, it's oercamp.de open at 20. oercamp.de slash open at 20. This will lead you to a Zoom meeting where you can see and talk to us live and in real persons. Hoping to see you there. Bye bye.